Hello everyone, welcome back to Stockbridge Sketchworks. I am your wounded wombat, Peter Stockbridge. And it's been a while since I've done a sketch on this channel. Admittedly, it's been uh, probably about three months. Uh, and since my January announcement, uh, some things have um, gotten in the way of my progress and Namely, it's sort of mostly unforeseen issues. I wanted to get the whole po podcast production side of my work schedule done way before the start of February. Uh, but what ended up happening is that uh, I had suffered some health issues and just various other, you know, situations which I, I'm not going to bother going into because I don't really want to play my own violin so we're jumping back in uh, with a sketch that's not on the schedule and the reason for this is is that my friend who I did the podcast with called Lost Then Found which is on my YouTube channel is a very hard-hitting discussion about his experiences as uh, someone who was adopted. Uh, so this is a photo, uh, a, a sketch of a photo that was taken on the second meet of their entire life. So uh, over uh, a 43 year period, um, they've been apart. And recently this year in January, they met for the first time. So, my friend asked me to sketch this for uh, Mother's Day, and um, I've 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 had this video under my belt for a few days. <laughs> and, um, I kind of ideally wanted to get this out before the next podcast, or at least delay the uh, Colombo podcast, because I kind of felt a bit uh, guilty that I was releasing loads of podcasts without doing any sketches and I'll get to why I haven't done um, sketches in detail in a bit but um, you know other than the, the issues that I've been facing so this sketch uh, this sketch is of a photo of uh, their second meeting as I've said and uh, it's a present for um, her for Mother's Day so I do hope you like it. It was very nice to see you, um, uh, especially having been um, uh, along the ride with uh, Richard. And uh, it's uh, it's just it's it's a it's a fantastic story. It's a fantastic uh, ending to um, such a heartbreaking tale, which has lasted years and years. So, here's to you. Um, uh, now, so th this stage at the moment, I'm just going over the original uh, markings that I made, getting everything set. Uh, I'm just sort of refining the uh, the tracing parts of it all, and I am I, I'm on a serious time constraint with it as well. Uh, I've I, I literally left this to uh, the last day, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I kind of feel quite bad about it, but. Uh, I sometimes I work quite well <laughs> under pressure so I think all in all this took me let's see about seven to eight hours um, there was an initial sort of hour work and that was with the, the tracing and then uh, the next day I sat down started at about midday and um, kept going until I think it was about 7, 7.30. So 
So we are just sort of going through now, blocking out the various important bits. So we're just sort of sketching out uh, Richard's facial proportions, um, the boundaries of his beard, uh, his mouth, and there's a there's a it's it's, it's a fairly long road to go. So. Once this step is done, then the next step is working on the skin. I do like to change up the order of which I do these sketches. I've mentioned this before, uh, where in when I was doing black and white sketches, I'd always focus on the eyes and then work my way out. But for me, I've, I've realized that color sketching is a completely different process. And it's been quite fun getting um, the pipeline as efficient as possible. And I, I, you know, I don't like to learn from other people when it comes to this sort of thing. I'm entirely self-taught. And I'm I'm I I'm glad of that, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, you can be taught how to do art, but ultimately there's no when it comes to art there's no right or wrong. Uh, it's all down to you individually. It's very it's very subjective. So we're moving on to Richard's mother now, and she's such a sweet lady, you know. She's exactly how I imagined she would be. <laughs> uh, just, just lovely, you know. Um, I, I'm a quite, I'm, I'm a fairly agoraphobic person, and I, well, I've, I've, I've developed it over the past sort of couple of years, and I wouldn't say it was the coronavirus or anything like that, like lockdown that did it. But I am, was, well, I was very sort of apprehensive about taking the trip up to Scotland. And uh, just because up until that point, I hadn't had uh, a, a successful holiday, <clears throat> shall we say, for a, a number of long years. The last time I tried to go on holiday, I completely freaked out and had to take the train home. So that wasn't a very pleasant experience. So I was a little bit apprehensive, but uh, the the beauty of Scotland just just blew me away. Where as we were traveling up the, the main arterial motorway to the north, we, uh, well, I certainly realized that all the buildings just melted away and before we knew it, it was just rolling countryside. Uh, oh, it was just, it was stunning. And as we approached the border and we, we carried on through past um, the Lake District and the Pennines, it, oh, it was like I could breathe, <laughs> you know. And when we got to this wonderful, wonderful place, Hillside Lodge, I think it was called, Hillfield Lodge, um, it was just, it was absolutely beautiful. Ten minutes outside of um, town. And I just, I really enjoyed it. It, it was exactly what I needed. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to be there to support Richard. Um, so I, I, I swallowed my apprehension and fear <laughs> to, to take that step with him. Um, and I'm glad that I did. I thought it was a very eye-opening experience for him. It was for me as well, uh, for, for everyone all around. And um, I'm, I'm not so afraid <laughs> anymore of, of going outside and uh, embracing the dawn. Uh, my story is a long one, and I won't bother going into it, but uh, suffice it to say that 
um, I've, I've come out on the other side of a very long dark tunnel and uh, I've got a few scratches but largely okay so we've got the form uh, developing quite nicely here and it's, it, it's at this stage where I wouldn't really panic if you get a proportion wrong you are really just blocking things in and concern yourself more with uh, getting the shades and the colouring right what I'm doing at the moment with getting the side of her face um, is just that it's an approximation I know that at some point I'm going to have to go through and get those measurements right so you you might notice a couple of uh, weird cuts uh, or crossfade cuts um, it's, it's pretty much because um, I'm, sh I'm, I'm filming things in one hour stints and then taking like a 10 minute break and then jumping back in basically so um, I think my cat comes along at some point and sort of messes things up and pushes the camera <laughs> away a little bit God bless us all Okay, so the first step with getting skin tone uh, is, well, the way I do it at least, is I go through with a very light skin tone pencil and I go over the whole thing. And the reason why I go over the whole thing and not just light the light areas is because skin is absolute as uh, so to speak you know there's all kinds of things going on with skin there's subsurface scattering there's bounce lighting there's this the specular from sweat and and skin pores and and minute um sort of skin folds and stuff like that so if you're just going to layer one skin color onto a white sheet you're not really going to get a very accurate look as opposed to l laying down like i'm doing now a very light sort of pale skin tone and then going over it again with some deeper shades and then again and then again until um, as you'll see in this episode uh, things start to form which is why i say don't really panic too much if you go out of the boundary and you, you know you get a you get a measurement wrong because you will have a chance to um, resolve it all at some point and, and um, add in enough detail to uh, resolve the issue. Oh, mate, isn't the war bollocks? Jesus Christ, man, what is going on over there, right? Oh, there's, there's no need for war. I promised that I wouldn't go on a rant about it, but you know, I might have to, because it, it just, it, there's no need for it, you know. I, I've, I've essentially stopped listening to the news just it's just because I can't handle it anymore um, it's too painful there's there's never a need to go to war you know because every war ends in talks right every single war has ended in a talk in in, in peace talks and whatever so if that's the case, why aren't we just skipping the war part and going straight to the talks? Because what's the point? Oh, it's just the flexing of muscles. There. It's just like, oh, you know. I thought we were all past this, to be quite honest with you. And I, I don't understand what the point of it all is. If it's about territory, then it doesn't Putin have enough 
it, you know, he's, he's, I, I think he's like one of the richest men on the planet. He's got, he's got multiple billions. I know that much. It's like, aren't you satisfied with what you have? No, obviously not. What a waste of life and effort. And this is his legacy. Well done. You're not going to get anywhere with violence. Uh, using violence as a tool. It's just, you're not going to get anywhere. You have to talk. It, it, you have to, you know, use the pen as your weapon. And no, not like that. Not like jabbing it into someone's neck. <laughs> you know. But, the, you know, the problem is there's so many secretive people who are so greedy and they're rich and they want to be more rich and they always want more and there's you know there's always going to be people like that behind the scenes cloak and dagger and you know the reason why our country well down in the uk at least is doing so badly and you know the bills are are rising twice this year is because you know our government to can't sort their lives out. It's a joke. There's too many people behind the scenes being paid their, uh, you know, bribe fees and, and you know, well, there's all these secret handshakes going on behind the screen. We're not stupid. You know, if MPs took a pay cut, then maybe things would get sorted out. Mm, just a suggestion. Anyway, can I not go on about this anymore? Can we just sort of talk about other things? It's my birthday today. Ha ah, happy birthday to me. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm 43 today, for fuck's sake. And it's a scary thing, man. It's very scary. And I wanted this year to be quite a, a special set of Operation. Not because it's my birthday, but, but you know, I traditionally I've always hated my birthday and I always wanted to just sort of hide away and, and not make a fuss of it. But I've been through so much trauma recently that I, I felt like I wanted to celebrate a bit this year, you know. Um, but it's, um, it's not really gone to plan. <laughs> And I'm not really overly surprised about it. Um, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I am recording this sort of early Sunday morning. It's, it's probably about 3 a.m. So the day hasn't actually happened yet, um, but I have got some family coming over later and uh, uh, it's gonna be a lovely day. It will be a nice, nice, lovely day. Um, but I'm disappointed about a, a few things and, um, you know, it is the way it is. <laughs> uh, so anyway, working on his eyebrows now. And uh, eyebrows are cool. Eyebrows are sort of a really fun things to do. I quite enjoy. Um, eyebrows because that you know no two eyebrows are the same they're just this they're so <laughs> they're so unique so we've got a nice fairly darkish brown now and we're, we're going through all the the darker parts of his skin so around the eyes um, folds, all that kind of thing, shading. One of the things you have to remember with skin is that it's not really one color. It's not pink, you know, like a, a sort of a pale beigey pink. It's all kinds of colors. 
it can be yellow in places, it can be red, it can be even a sort of a tiny amount of green. Um, it, 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 it's all down to um, the light that they're under and um, the, the bounce lighting subsurface, you know, scattering from that. And uh, you'll find invariably, if you're doing what I do, which is sort of working from a photo, uh, you know, you study the picture like I do, and you have to sort of make a mental note of what kind of, you know, skin uh, color tones you're going to need, you know. So, I've got all kinds of shades here. I've got a, uh, you know, greens and blues and, and oranges and reds and all that kind of thing. Now, uh, I won't lie, I always get nervous when I do eyes because it's really uh, the most important part of the piece. And if you get that wrong, it can be <laughs> quite depressing. And c committing with color pencils kind of means you can't really come back from it. If you make a mistake, you can try to fix it, but most of the time you might find that if the mistake is too big, you'd have to start again, which is kind of balls. So this project is in two parts. Um, I was able, as I've said before, to get this done fairly quickly. Um, so this is a good sort of example to show you guys how quickly you can get things done. And, uh, you know, I'm awful. I'm really awful, but I tend to sort of get an anxiety before I start a sketch or when I'm due to start a sketch and just purely because the amount of mental work that goes into producing a sketch and you don't really sort of realize the amount of work I guess it's like if you're Richard said um, the other day that it's um, when you're driving long distance like we did to Scotland um, the, controlling the car on a motorway, for instance, is all these micro -move movements and stuff, and you may not notice any fatigue at the start. You may think that oh, everything's fine and you can go for hours and hours and hours, but you'll so slowly start, you know, feeling the pain in your arms and stuff. So it's kind of like that, but mentally, it's it, it's like very slow process of the 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 constant focus that you need uh, and what I mean by that is I'm always looking at the source photo every few seconds I'm darting my eyes over looking back and essentially what I'm doing is I'm just remembering the shapes I, I don't look at the end piece and think that's what I need to do <laughs> I look at everything as shapes and colors so I break everything down mentally in my head and I focus on one piece at a time and I make sure it's the best that it can be before I move on. And I've gotten so refined over the, the years that I've been doing this that I'm able to do it at a relative speed now. And, you know, if I was to try and tackle this, you know, a year or two ago, it, it would never be this good. Not by a long shot, really. So, uh, if you are listening to this, 
in the background or whatever. And if, if you do uh, listen to the podcast, please can you let me know whether you like these those podcasts. Um, I personally really enjoy doing them, and I know that Mark and Alan, um, they certainly enjoy doing it. So if it's something that you want more of, then uh, we will be doing it anyway. <laughs> so um, we hope it, it, we, you do want it. Um, there's going to be some shifting um, with this channel and how it works in the future. Um, but everything that I've announced, uh, specifically in January, is still happening. Uh, there's a, um, an extra project on that list, so there's a total of four projects to come. And then it's the, the big James Bond series. Now, whether I do actually get to do all of that this year or not, I don't know. It's down to a number of factors, uh, not the least of which is my mood. And as I said, it does take a lot out of you producing artwork. As, as lovely as it is and as meditative as it is, it is very exhausting. And I guess it's something that I, you know, I never really wanted to go into business with it, to be quite honest. Because I just didn't want to, you know, stop enjoying it and I fear that I would stop enjoying it. Um, uh, you know, I, I enjoy a, doing a lot of things. I enjoy editing and sound mixing and graphics design, 3D design. I can't really sort of stick on one thing. That's just the way it is. And, you know, I'm not a consistent worker. I'm not a nine to five. I'm not a nine to five type of guy. You know, I, I just, I can't work that way anymore. Um, my brain won't allow it. I've got congenital toxoplasmosis and it's not a fully understood science. Um, we think that there might be some brain damage going on up there and all kinds of things. But, you know, ultimately we don't really know yet. I would like to get some answers. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to know. Um, can I just mention that I absolutely uh, despise doing glasses? <laughs> it's so easy to get wrong, and you'd think that, you know, I'd find hands more difficult, but I really don't. I think, you know, for me, glasses are an absolute nightmare. I, I think because it's uniform... Right, you have to get the proportions absolutely perfect or it won't look like a pair of glasses, it'll just look weird, right? And, you know, going from doing organic-based drawings to, to something as solid and absolute as, as, as glasses is kind of a bit jarring, to be quite honest with you. So, you can see, I just want to get it out of the way, so I can move on. So, this episode is slightly longer than usual, about 10 minutes, clocking in at just over 40 minutes. To be fair, I was tempted to just leave it there for Richard's character, just leave him with white hair and a white beard, why not? Right, 
just just move on to his man. Yes, this is what you're going to look like when you're old, you old git. Um, yeah, so... Lots to do still. And... Not a lot of time to do it in. <laughs> Uh, there will be a speed sketch version of this video when all the parts have been released. And so I expect it to be released on the coming Tuesday. So part one is obviously today, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day if you're a mother. Uh, part two is tomorrow and the speed sketch version should be Tuesday. That's if everything goes according to plan and my software doesn't kick me in the nuts like it has started to do very recently. I don't know why, but it comes up with errors a lot more often now. Whereas before it was absolutely fine. Uh, yes, I'm looking at you, Adobe. Okay, so doing his hair. Now he's not quite ginger. He is ginger, but he's he's a he's a dark auburn ginger, right? <laughs> he's not one of them bright, flary fellows. So um, he's got a lot of different colours going on in his hair and his beard, and that will be reflected. But the main stage right now is getting the form of it into place. And uh, getting then getting all the light and the shadows and, and all of that, um, you know, detail in. But so just just walking. Um, Walking through all the uh, the blocking now, just making sure I've got everything I need. I have to uh, remember that the glass lens is distorting the perspective a little bit, blowing it's blowing it out a little bit by. A fair few millimeters there, so just got to remember that with the hair. I do hope you enjoy this music. Um, there's not a lot of music that I can play that is uh, not flagged, shall we say. And so I don't want to be sort of, you know, copyrighted, you know, have notices all the time, to be quite honest with you. And in the future, at some point soon, I will be designing my own music. I've always wanted to make my own music, primarily sort of orchestral pieces, you know, film scores, that kind of thing. Kind of like the thing you're hearing right now, actually, to be quite honest but my own sort of version of it. So I've announced recently that I'm no longer doing any uh, commissions for free. Um, I've been trialing out free commissions on my YouTube channel for about a year now. And next to no one has taken me off on the offer. I think probably like a handful of people. And that kind of surprised me a little bit. I thought that there'd be more people who would um, 
take the plunge and, and uh, go for it. Especially when I was offering that I send them the original for free if they lived in the UK. But um, I can no longer afford to offer that anymore. Uh, I can't really afford it. And I'm okay financially, but I, you know, I can't afford to do it for free. Um, it takes it takes a lot of my time up and uh, a lot of energy as well. Um, so yeah, do uh, get in contact with me if you'd like me to do something for yourself or for a friend, for a special occasion, Christmas present, or birthday present, Mother's Day present. I work from photos uh, and I really don't charge a lot. It's double figures. And so, uh, you know, there's always room for negotiation. So, yeah, uh, my email is in my about page of my of the YouTube channel. You can reach me in, in multiple ways. I have an Instagram account. You can reach me over on, on that channel as well. And um, so let's talk, you know. So we're working on the, um, the bags under his eyes, bless him. He's, he's, uh, I think Richard was quite tired at this point and very uh, emotionally exhausted. So, you, you, you know, you can sort of, you can see that in his eyes. I don't really want to be too accurate. I want to be flattering. So... <laughs> I'll be quite gentle. So we haven't got much long left. A few minutes left to go. And uh, so look out for part two tomorrow. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Leave a comment. Um, I really, really hate having to ask, but uh, in this day and age, it's, you know, you don't really have a choice. Uh, you know, I'll always go on to say that it doesn't matter to me whether, you know, this channel is a success. The whole point is that I provide, you know, good entertainment, art, um, good discussions about the things that we love and talking about philosophy, the TV show industry, the movie industry, the games industry, politics, all kinds of things. If there's something that you want us to talk about, then again, just leave a comment, get in touch. Um, uh, you know, we are here for you guys. We want to make you laugh. We want to, uh, you know, we want to make you feel good, not in that way, but in a, in a, you know, we want you to walk out and sort of feel good about yourself because you're worth it. And, uh, there's always a better, uh, there's always a better you. There's always ways to improve yourself as a person and no one knows that better than you do. And it's worth doing. So I wish you all the love in the world. I wish you peace and happiness. Uh, I hope you're staying safe with the uh, coronavirus and with the war. All my love to everyone in Ukraine and all the refugees. I hope uh, you're doing safe and I hope the ones who uh, aren't safe will be safe my thoughts are with you all and if I had the money <laughs> if I had the means 
I would jump up and help. Uh, I do feel very bad about it. Anyway, um, until the next episode, I will leave you with the last minute or two. Take care of yourself. See you next time.